<laughs> it's just... It's dr <laughs> Welcome to the Rookson Pro 9 Repu. A commenter on my Rookson Pro 8 video noted the version 9 was out. And I should investigate, so here we are and up front. You know, I'm spying a few things that might hold some promise. So I'm not going to really put this together for you guys. We're just going to look at some features, some faults, try to fix some stuff, sharpen a knife, then we'll talk about the pros and cons. If you stick around long enough, you get to hear me go on a rant about the comment section in the last Rooks and Pro video. The first thing I noticed is that I like the case. It's portable and much nicer than the fabric case the 8 came in. I wish it had a handle, but it's still very nice. Now, the manual doesn't actually include a parts list or setup instructions, but I should be able to wing this together one way or another. You know, to me, the looks aren't bad. It looks simple and usable, and uh, I like it. There's a couple new features on the Rookson Pro 9 over the 8. The first is it comes with this metal uh, pivot ball, so that was good. Everyone was concerned about the plastic ball in the last one. The next is it has this uh, sharpening arm garage, so you can lift that up and off of your work surface, which, yeah, that's, that's actually pretty cool. The next cool new feature is this stone compensator right here. It moves up and down. If I'm sharpening with a thicker stone, you know, I'll set it to uh, this thickness, lock it in, and then if I want to come in later and preserve my sharpening angle with a thinner stone, you know, I just reset this compensator. I move it down to the smaller stone, put that stone in and use it, and it's already adjusted the angle for me. It comes with these rubberized tabs that go on the knife clamp. All right, let's talk about some things that weird me out a little bit. Up here you have a, you know, a hex screw. It's here, there's one here and there's one down here on the sharpening arm where it abuts the uh, stone holder. And then you have this thumb screw here that tightens by hand. And then everywhere you might need adjustment on the fly, I guess during sharpening, is a thumb screw slash screwdriver. And these will not tighten tight enough without the screwdriver. The thumb screw portion just doesn't work. You always have to use a screwdriver to make it tight enough to where it doesn't slip and slide. And you know, sharpening on the fly and getting a screwdriver into a Phillips head sort of on the back of the unit while you're trying to uh, sharpen stuff. I don't know. I wish they were all hex. Hex to me are a lot easier to use. So um, this thumb screw here, I've already changed. Yeah, so I dremeled that notch in so that I could use a flathead and actually tighten it down to the point that it wouldn't wiggle or loosen up during use. There's a turn screw down here at the base and more hex screws of the same size here in the knife clamps. Okay, I lost a bunch of footage. I'll just reshoot everything from here forward. Um, that's the first time in 10 years I had a memory card go bad. Um, what happened here is this bracket attaches the sharpening arm over here and the stone holder over here. There's a, there was a hole, a threaded hole here where this thumb screw attached. Uh, the screws were stripped or something. It wouldn't really tighten down, so I just welded this on. This really should probably just be one piece right here anyway. I'm not sure why there's three pieces with two screws that close together on something that's supposed to stay rigid. Um, it works and you know if you undo it it'll still fit in the box just fine so you know whatever. Next thing I want to talk to you about is this chattery travel with the arm you know through the ball here. Just shakes everything, shakes all your attachment points loose and what's happening is that this screw is too tight. You have to have it just right. If it's too tight, it causes a lot of chattering. If it's too loose, the whole thing pops out of its housing. And, it, and it's very, you have to dial it in just right so that it stays put and doesn't chatter. It's actually, you know, another point of irritation. I also, this metal bar is not round. It's actually got angles on it, little ridges. I actually also went and sanded those down with some sandpaper. And again, I lost that footage. You guys remember I wasn't a big fan of the plastic on the Rookson Pro 8, and it's back on the Pro 9. Moving on to the stone holder, you know, it's a lot like the last one. It will accommodate Edge Pro stones. You can put in the Edge Pro stone on this side because it's got the angular uh, ledge there. And, it ha you know, you can just use plain old flat stones that aren't attached to aluminum backing like this one. The, the difference here is, is this little uh, tightening lever or something i don't know and and this uh blade guard this is a guard a hand guard to keep the blade off your hand you know when you're running it like this it's supposed to guard against the blade i don't i don't know the old one worked fine the old one worked fine i don't know what 
why they added a new something new that can go wrong. So the spring cinches it up against the stone. I guess then you tighten that, and then you know you sort of you know clench your teeth and tighten this leather, and the stone feels like it's about to pop out and explode this way and split into pieces. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand why they complicated this. This seemed to work fine in the old one, and now it just makes me uncomfortable. And it's, and it's one more thing that can wear out and go wrong, and I don't get it. I just don't get it. I think the idea there is to be able to rapid swap in and out stones just by turning the lever to loosen and tighten, but mine didn't work that way. The entire thing had to be reset once you uh, took a stone out. Does the sharpening angle stay true side to side when you flip the knife clamp? You know, it's 16.45 on one side, 16.95 when you flip it. That's actually not bad. I expected a lot worse. Now, when you flip it back, it, it goes a little more off, but it's still in the ballpark. It doesn't interfere with sharpening. And uh, some of that might just be, you know, the way the angle finder is sitting on the stone more than a difference in the clamp. So I, it's better than I expected, and it's usable. You guys really got on to me about how I treated their water stones last time. And you guys said, well, these stones you just wipe with water. And yes, that is what the instructions say. Wet the cloth, and while it's attached to the stone holder, you're supposed to wipe it uh, with the wet cloth, which should be wrung dry, or partially dry, I guess it says. And then you wipe off the excess water. And then you're ready to go. This loosened up again, all right. You know, I need to put some Loctite on that. That's just, I just hate that, I mean. At this point I go back and I read the instructions, the rest of the instructions for the stones, and you're supposed to clean the stone and wipe the knife blade after every one to two passes. And you also reapply water after every one to two passes. I don't know. 4.97. Here I'm checking to see how much uh, damage we did to the stones after one knife and Basically, we're losing about 0.3 millimeters, 5 to 6 percent of the width of each of these stones, with the exception of the 6 and 10,000 grit. These things wear down pretty quick. This is one side of the knife, about, I don't know, 15 passes with the 1500 grit stone. Look what it did to the other side. Are you guys looking at that? <laughs> it's just... It's dry. <laughs> Unbelievable, y'all. That's like the seventh or eighth time that's come loose. Yeah, it wiggled loose again, so I've just had enough at this point. I super glue it together and we'll keep it in place with super glue. It's starting to wiggle a little more. So I don't really think this polish looks like 10,000 grit to me. It looks more like maybe upper end of 2,000, maybe 3,000-ish. And it cuts about like that too, which isn't bad. That's fine. You know, it's not 10,000 grit to my mind, in my eye, but it's still a pretty sharp knife. I think I formulated some pretty good thoughts about this sharpener. So let's get it properly retired, then we'll do some pros and cons.
All right, pros and cons. Pros first. The case, it's a nice case. Sharpening arm garage works great. There's a stone compensator that's pretty cool. It's got a metal pivot ball this time around. The datum flip angle accuracy seems consistent enough to me, and uh, that's okay in this price range. And there's a nice push-pull handle. Cons, there's no setup instructions. There's no parts list. There's four types of screws. The thumb screws loosen pretty easily, so you do have to engage them with the Phillips every time to keep them tight. It's mostly aluminum. It's advertised as uh, mostly steel. The uh, knife clamp has the wiggles. It gets the wiggles pretty quick, so I don't know about that. Quality issues seem to abound. The base screw loosened. I had to super glue it in. The pivot ball chatter issue, you know, I'm not sure. I think that's a design element. I don't know if that's a tolerance or a design element uh, that needs to be adjusted. There's still a plastic part here. The sharpening rod, I'm not sure it was really all that round, you know. It's got bad threads, so I had to do some welding. And then the stones. The stones are pretty bad. So based on the unit I received, I, you know, for me it's a pass. I just is. I'm sorry to say that. Alright guys, if you made it this far, you're here for a rant. So after the last Ruxin Pro video, I got a lot of feedback that I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know how to sharpen knives. I'm not following the directions. How can I review the sharpener or the stones uh, in that case? And, you know, I'm, I disagree with those assertions. But here's why I think these stones are garbage. <laughs> the first is that they don't polish or uh, sharpen a knife to 10,000 grit. You know, the knife performs more like two or 3,000 grit, which is still sharp. And I understand why people say that these stones get their knives sharp because they do, uh, just not 10,000 sharp in, in this case. And the polish definitely doesn't look like 10,000, you know. Uh, the next clue is price. A set of six stones that goes to 10,000 grit of any quality should be several hundred dollars or more, right? Like, probably for good quality probably you know four hundred dollars or more so how is it that they can sell you a sharpener and six quality stones for sixty dollars you know do the math they can't they're not losing hundreds of dollars every time they sell one of these units right no these stones are garbage the next is the directions these stones look like water stones they feel like water stones they're porous like water stones and especially in the low grits, for water stones, you generally soak them. You don't wipe them once with a wrung out uh, towel. And you certainly, for most water stones, I've never seen one that this is the case, you, you wouldn't uh, have to wipe the stone and the blade after every one to two sharpening passes and then re-wet the stone. Never seen it. Never heard of it. <laughs> and if that's what you want in a knife sharpener, hey, this is this is your huckleberry right here. You can spend all day trying to clean the blade and the stone between each pass while you're trying to sharpen a knife because it takes hundreds of passes in some cases to sharpen a knife. The next is uh, the wear on these stones is pretty dramatic, you guys. These three stones lost about 5% of their height after one medium-length carbon steel knife. That's not even like a super steel or a stainless steel knife. And, uh, you know, to me that says he's got about 10 knives in him before they're th too thin to chuck up uh, without breaking. And then this one even lost more height. I think this was around 8%. This is the one that really disintegrated. So there's something wrong with the binder. Either the binder's no good or the ratio of binder to grit is no good. But, I mean, I, I just can't believe you would see that video <laughs> of this stone disintegrating in front of your eyes and feel like these are quality stones, you know. They're just not. They're just garbage. So, you know, I understand this unit is probably available without any stones at all. And if you want to risk it and, and buy your own stones that are higher quality, that might be a route to go here. But the unit has so many problems on its own that I think this is just a hard, hard pass.